All right, this video uh, concerns, this video is a follow-up to the dissection of the actual cadaver heart that, that we just did. So this is a model of the heart, and we're gonna go through some of the various chambers and structures, et cetera, on this model. So I've got the heart kind of sitting here in anatomical position. Of course, it's oversized. And some of the first things we can look at here, uh, when the heart sits like this, it's the right ventricle that's occupying most of the space here. And let's look at some of the greater, uh, the great vessels as we have in here. First thing we can see that's coming right out here, out of the left ventricle, is the aorta. You can see the arch of the aorta, the transverse aorta, as it kind of comes, loops back, and then curves down to become the abdominal, the thoracic and the abdominal aorta. These little suckers that are coming out of the aorta, here it looks like an octopus, are actually the beginnings of the uh, posterior intercostal arteries. Now this vessel right here in front of the aorta is the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery. It's the only artery in the human body that's uh, carrying bad blood. So this bad blood is coming out of the right ventricle on its way into the lungs to get oxygenated. What other vessels do we have here? So it's aorta, pulmonary artery. Over here is the main return to the body, or at least from the upper half of the body. This is the superior vena cava right here, dumping in to the right atrium. So the superior vena cava is going to be coming into the superior vena cava is going to be the, the um, right and left brachiocephalic veins dumping in here. Carrying bad blood or deoxygenated blood from the lower half of the body is going to be the inferior vena cava. So here's the inferior vena cava. So both the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava are going to dump into the right atrium right here. So that's the great vessels on the front, the majority of them. Um, you can see here on the aorta, we have an asymmetry with these large vessels coming out of the aorta. Um, what we've got is on the left side, Right here, we have a, a common carotid coming up here, which is then going to branch into an internal and external carotid. And also coming off here, we have a subclavian name because it runs under the clavicle. And as it comes out from under the clavicle, it changes its name to axillary and then brachial in the arm. Now the asymmetry comes in because on the left side you have a common carotid and a subclavian. On the right side, before those arteries come off, you have the brachiocephalic artery or brachiocephalic trunk. And that's going to come up and then that's going to give off the common carotid and the right subclavian artery on this side. So there's some asymmetry. Other arteries we can see here, um, here's the thyrocervical trunk, looks like thyrocervical trunk here. What else do we have? That's the thyrocervical trunk. And coming up, let's look on the back side. Coming up here, here and here are the vertebral arteries, which are going to gain access to the foramen transversarium right here. Remember the mnemonic vitamin C and sometimes D? Well this is the vitamin right here. And coming off, so it's vitamin, it's vertebral. The I in vitamin B internal thoracic, internal mammillary. Here's one right here which is going to gain access on the front just next to the sternum to feed the breast and then continue as the musculophrenic artery, an artery that's used in uh, coronary bypass to kind of tie in and bypass a uh, blockage in the coronary arteries. On the back here we can also see, as long as we're on the back, 
in red, these are veins right here. You see right, right here. So this is coming from the lungs. These are the pulmonary veins carrying oxygenated blood back into the heart, specifically the left atrium. Pulmonary veins right here. What else is sticking back here? Here we can see the azygous vein, which is a rather large vein, which drains intercostal spaces and dumps back into the superior vena cava to make its way into the right atrium. What other goodies can we see from the back of the heart here? This muscular tube is the esophagus. Sitting right in front of that muscular tube is the trachea. You can see from above, here's the trachea. It's actually a C-shaped cartilag cartilaginous ring open in the back. That opening is closed by the tracheal's muscle right here. And then here's the esophagus right here. Other things we can see on the outside of the heart. We can see some nerves. There's a cardiac plexus. So these are sympathetic fibers right here. Also, there's several big nerves. So the phrenic nerves go down to the diaphragm. And another big nerve right here, I don't know if you can see that, is the vagus nerve. This is the vagus right here. I know that because it's near this embryological vestige right here, which is the ligamentum arteriosum, which was the patent ductus arteriosum in utero to help blood bypass the lungs. It closes after birth and it's a landmark for the vagus nerve. It's also a landmark as the vagus nerve comes down. As the vagus nerve comes down, this is actually the vagus, it recurs and that's the recurrent laryngeal recurring back around the aorta to go to the larynx to supply muscles of the larynx. It goes around the aorta, recurs around the aorta, right by the ligament of arterioles. On the other side, there's the, the recurrent laryngeal recurs around the subclavian artery on the right side. So what, what else do we have here? Anything green here, these are supposed to represent lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels. And there's one very main important one that dumps in to the crotch between the um, jugular vein and the subclavian vein, and that's the thoracic duct right here. That, as you can see, running up the esophagus here, then coming over to the left, is a thoracic duct. That's draining lymph um, from the body, lower body. There's a cisterna highly, which is a swelling, and then that lymph makes its way back into the venous system. This yellow here is remnants of the thymus gland, which is rather big in the uh, newborn, but it kind of atrophies and replaced by fat in the adult. It could be the source of the T cells, thymus gland. So what else do we have? Superficially, we can see the little auricles of the atrium, these little ears or flaps, which give a little more volume to the atrium. We can see some of the coronary arteries. We'll talk about them in a second. The left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. Let's see if we've missed anything here on the outside. I think we did pretty good. Got most of the structures there. Good. All right, let's move on to the inside of the heart, and then we'll come back to the coronary circulation. So let's start to open, let's open this heart up. All right, let's open up the heart and see what we've got here. Here's the left atrium. Here's the left ventricle. Blood gets from the left atrium to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. This is the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve is kept from prolapsing by these thin cords called the corda tendinae, which hook to 
muscles called the papillary muscles. Here's an example of a papillary muscle. There's a special name for this papillary muscle here by the septum. There's a little loop here called the septomarginal trabeculae or moderator band. It has some of the conduction fibers going through it and kind of helping these little papillary muscles contract and keep that valve from prolapsing. This rough surface inside the right ventricle is called trabeculae carne. Think of it as carne meat. It's kind of like a rough meat. There's a similar thing in the atrium, but there we call it pectinate muscles. Pectinate muscles right here in the atrium. So let's back up and go back into the atrium here and see some of the stuff we can see in the right atrium. As I mentioned, there's pectinate muscles in here. Um, there's a little groove up here and there's a top which is called uh, sulcus terminalis right here. And there's a, a little ridge on the inside called cristae terminalis. And there's this little 86, this little labeled insect right here happens to be the SA node. And the SA node uh, initiates contraction and it's going to send an impulse down to the AV node. Several things open up. It might be kind of hard to see. You can kind of see some of those, some of those openings in to the right atrium. Um, some of the key ones, uh, of course, the inferior vena cava is going to open. The superior vena cava is going to go into there. There, um, the little white crab that's supposed to represent the AV node. There's a blue dot. Do you see the blue dot, the smaller dot? That's the opening of the coronary sinus on the back of the heart, which is the main vein on the back of the heart, coronary sinus. And if you look medially, let's see if I can see it in here. Between the septum, there's a depression. Oh, there it is. It's, there's a depression. It's called the fossa oval, fossa oval. That's actually another uh, flap that's open that allows blood to shunt and, and not go into the lung and the fetus, and that is closed. The fossa valve. It's a foramen ovale in the uh, fetus. And then, of course, the biggest opening is down into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. So that takes care of the right side of the heart. Well, of course, exiting the right ventricle is the pulmonary semilunar valve. There's three cusps here. Pulmonary semilunar valve opens up and allows blood to be ejected into the pulmonary trunk and into the lungs. So let's move to the other side of the heart. Not a lot going on in the left atrium right here. We do have, we do have the pulmonary veins returning with oxygenated blood back into the left atrium. They fill up the left atrium and then you're going to get the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve opening up. It's called mitral because somebody thought it looked like a mitre, the thing that cardinals and the pulp wear on their head. That opens up and blood drops in to the left thicker walled, most important chamber, the left ventricle. Left ventricle contraction throws blood out the aorta right here. So the aortic semilunar valve is going to open up the aortic valve and blood is going to be ejected out the aorta. So that is your chambers. There are papillary muscles and cord tendine again over here. So let's look at the coronary circulation real quick. The coronary arteries originate from the aorta. So we can get rid of that. Let's get rid of the pulmonary trunk there. And you can see the right coronary artery here. You can see the left coronary artery right here. Do you see the left coronary artery? And when we open that up, you can actually see that red dot is supposed to, it's supposed to be there. That red dot represents the opening of the right coronary artery. It's called an os or ostium. And then there's another red dot on this side which represents the opening of the left, into the left coronary. Filling is greatest during diastole, when the heart muscle is relaxed. 
and there's an elastic rebound of the aorta forcing blood against the closed aortic semilunar valve so that blood can be forced out the coronary arteries. Boom. So let's just look at the course of the coronary arteries. Uh, the left coronary artery comes out and it circles around to the back in the sulcus between the atrium and the ventricle. And that's called the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery has a descending branch. It's called the left anterior descending. It's also called the widow maker because when that one gets blocked, you usually die because the, it supplies most of the left, the very important left ventricle. So it's LAD or it's the anterior interventricular coronary artery. To the right, you have the right coronary artery. There's a small marginal branch along the margin of the heart and it goes around to the back to form the posterior interventricular artery. There is a kind of a weak anastomosis between the left and right coronary arteries. Now the veins. With the most important coronary artery, the left anterior descending or anterior interventricular artery, you have the great cardiac vein coming up, draining the ventricle. With the posterior descending coronary artery, posterior interventricular, you have the marginal coronary vein coming up. And over here on the margin, you have what's called the small cardiac vein coming up with the marginal branch of the right. All those are going to converge into the coronary sinus, which is a large swollen vein on the back of the heart. And as I showed you before, that dumps into the right atrium. So that blood, that drained blood from the coronary sinus makes its way back to the right atrium. So reviewing again, the arteries are left coronary artery, which splits into a circumflex branch and a left anterior descending. A right coronary artery sends a branch, a marginal branch, and it goes to the back to become the posterior interventricular. The veins in the front, you have the great cardiac vein. On the side, you have the small cardiac vein. And going with the right on the back is the middle cardiac vein. One other set of veins to mention are the anterior cardiac veins, which mysteriously dump directly into the right atrium without going through the coronary sinus. So there you go. That's a quick overview. Good luck with your dissection.